TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. You have arrived. Welcome to the Aspie World. Here's where we talk about anything and everything ASD in an upbeat and informative way. And now, here's your man on the spectrum, your autism ambassador, Daniel Morgan Jones. The odd Asperger symptoms or autism traits that you've probably not come across before in this form. Guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have autism and ADHD, and I make weekly videos all about this stuff. So if you're new around here and you haven't already subscribed, I highly recommend checking that notification bell down below to make sure that you subscribe and don't miss a video. Also, if you're watching on any other platform, just click follow. That'll be grand. Guys, what is going on? I, I wanted to do this video because I was in an event recently. I went to Sandidno, which is like a city near where I live, and I went there to do an event or talking about odd and kind of misunderstood traits and or symptoms if you will people don't really use the term symptoms that much but the the term trait it is used but traits of autism or asperger syndrome depending you know what you're diagnosed with and i kind of blew people's minds with things so i wanted to go over those today in a video because i think it's gonna be really interesting for you to learn so we're gonna get straight into it right after i tell you that you can download my free autism life hacks pdf book from autismhacks.net right now all right guys let's get into it okay so the first one i want to talk about is changes now when you think about changes being you know uh, an issue with change for someone on the autism spectrum you think okay yeah you know people on the autism spectrum do have issues with change which is true they do but it's not always what you think. People think that, you know, hey, we're going to go to McDonald's and then get ice cream, but then, you know, halfway the car breaks down. Yes, that is a change, and yes, that could upset someone on the spectrum, but that's not the only type of change that will cause someone on the spectrum to be upset or, or wound up or even maybe cause a meltdown. The change I'm talking about is things from evolving spaces, um, the sensory impact of buildings. Say you go outside and there is a, a building that used to be there, but now it's disappeared. That visual sense or visual aspect of where you are in the city or your town now has changed. Now that is something that people don't really think about because when you think about architecture and modifications, you think of improvements, right? And something that's going to be good. But actually for autistic people, those landmarks and those markers in their life are actually huge changes. You know, like one day you're walking on the street and there used to be a school here. Now it's a big field or there used to be a field there and that was a block of flats or an apartment block for you American folk. But those types of things are changes that people don't think about because you're only thinking about, you know, micro-sized changes, but on a macro scale, things, on a macro level, things change rapidly, especially with architecture. And I find this is so interesting. It's quite an odd thing to think about, but it definitely happens. So you could be like evaluating everything like, oh, my kid, you know, we're walking down the street or I'm walking down the street and, you know, I'm suddenly triggered and I've gone through all my triggers, everything, and it's just not happening. So this is something that would actually cause that to happen. Okay, so number two is sensory issues. Now we all talk about sensory processing disorder and sensory issues for people on the autism spectrum. And we all know that people on the autism spectrum do have issues with, you know, sense of touch, taste, and all the other stuff. But there's something more important that we don't really talk about. And this is the role of temperature in your sensory experience. Now, um, for instance, when I'm doing DIY, I, I get so hot and flustered because I'm having to do something that I'm not comfortable with. I'm not very comfortable with DIY because I have terrible uh, fine motor skills. But also, the attention that it takes to actually do DIY is quite difficult for people on the autism spectrum. Now, because of that, my temperature increases. And the temperature increases quite dramatically, and I'm already a hot person. So that temperature increase causes me to be completely disoriented. So I have to kind of like strip down to just my underpants to do the DIY, which FYI, guys, is super funny. You know, I know, have a good laugh. But that whole experience it reminds me of the fact that like I'm always hot and temperatures really trigger me. So I go into a room that's slightly hot or um, a little bit too hot for my liking and it's, I'm on the edge. I'm already, my cup is already full. I've got no more spoons left. If you know what spoon theory is, where you have like a certain amount of spoons that you can use during the day. And then when you're all spoons, it's meltdown time. Ew. But that experience is definitely something that people forget about. When they think about sensory experiences, they don't think about temperature experiences. But those do trigger people on the autism spectrum, which I think is quite odd to think about on a massive scale. Okay, so the last one I'm going to talk about here is clothing 
choices. Now, people on the autism spectrum do have issues with sensory textures, right? So the textures of clothing, um, so kind of like having tags on the back of your shirt, you know, you want to take those tags off because they feel like razor blades. Um, it could be all kinds of sensory input, you know, soft clothes, tight clothes, like there's a whole bunch of things that come with it. But really, really forgotten about all the time is the oddness of the fact that colors and shapes on clothing can also trigger an autism uh, brain to want to melt down. So like when I was a kid, I couldn't have jeans because of the the shape of the jeans like at one you know in the 90s i had the shape of jeans they were always very just like straight down no shape to them very square very card body and i couldn't have those on and same with like logos i used to love like getting t-shirts a load of logos on it but as you guys probably already noticed i always wear like plain t-shirts or just a small logo here because the logos that were here were too triggering and too too kind of like stimulating for me so i was always getting distracted by the logos on my t-shirt because i may not like them or those logos were like overriding my experience to stay focused and stay um you know kind of in the moment so those things are really interesting and i find them so fascinating if you found interest in this please share this video and drop me a comment down below i'll see you next time guys peace Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this podcast. Make sure you are subscribed because there are people listening right now who are not subscribed to this podcast. I can see you. Make sure you subscribe. Okay, guys, see you in the next one. Peace.